Aloha, children of the night, and welcome to another episode of the Tiki Golf Club. On the last episode of the Tiki Golf Club, we talked about shrunken heads. On this episode of the Tiki Golf Club, we're going to talk about severed heads. And zombie heads. And zombie heads. <laughs> <laughs> We have a thing for heads here at the Tiki Golf Club. With the last one, there was a process of shrinking down the head and, and, and maintaining the form. This one, you're just cutting the head right off. That's right. And depending on the depiction, the bloodier, the better. Yes. So um, let's see. Let's start with fresh and move to preserve. Well, we should, first of all, we should start with <laughs> the beginnings of all this, and that would be the Rang Clark. Which, unfortunately, I do not own. Nope. I am still on the hunt. For my own personal Ren Clark. We all are. And Ren Clark was the first, well, it was a place in Texas. It was a magic show. And that was a, a souvenir. Yeah. And um, was it considered the first tiki mug, kind of? Or? No, okay. no. But it is definitely like one of the first head type mugs. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. Um, the first tiki mug, I think, goes back to Trader Vic's and like the hinky dink, the yeah. Tonga punch cup and some of those. Gotcha. But, um, Severed heads are a thing yeah. in the Tiki community and the goth community. <laughs> yeah. And the Ren Clark, the one that's probably the clearest um, and uh, further down the line from the Ren Clark would probably be the, the reef does some really fun stuff. Yeah. Um, John Mulder from Inca Bookum does really great mugs. Yeah, he does. And this is their severed skipper. <laughs> and just like the Ren Clark, it is very bloody. Yeah. And really awesome. I had to have one. And that's kind of what the uh, Ren Clark looks like, too. It's that same idea. It's a surprised kind of, and and it's and it's presented with well, the, with the bring, neck up. Let me see this thing. So I, just, so I just realized if, if you're drinking out of this, you are literally drinking out of his severed head, like where the neck would be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's how the I, Clark is done. It's done inverted uh, and <laughs> and with all of the goo and, and gore. Kind Which of. makes me think like back in like when those were going around, I mean, some of the people back there, that would have taken some guts to do that, right? So like, here, drink out of this, this severed head. What? Yeah. Well, we, it's, it's an awesome mug. Now we don't even think about it. Well, you've you've got everybody has an opinion these days. That's the beauty of social yeah. media. But and then on that same riff, done in the exact same style, yeah. but the creature of the black lagoon is big toes. Really? Severed creature. And is it also a shrunken head too? Yes. So it's just kind of a crossover. So this is a crossover it's from the busy. other episode. Wow. But it's so it's still fresh, even though they've sewn the eyes and the lips like you would for a severed head. Yeah. For a um, shrunken head. It's it's done inverted in the Ren Clark style with the gore you know, at the top. You know what it looks like? It looks like Ernest Bergnine. <laughs> it could be a really um a really off day for Brando. You know, <laughs> he's very forward with the lips. So, but <laughs> it's just also that Ren Clark style. You've got the gore, you've got it inverted. Oh, I love it. Um, yeah, I saw that. I'll tell you what, Big to Toe, <laughs> you got skills. I will tell you that. You are, you are a man after my heart. You're combining so many different things because I, I mean, if there was any of the original Universal Monsters that I loved was the creature from the Black Lagoon. Oh, yeah. And I still love them. I love almost any depiction of that kind of like river god uh, yeah. thing. I mean, the original the original movies were great. Um, Guillermo del Toro's Shape of Water, yeah. taking it to a whole nother level, adding yeah. the bioluminescence and, you know, the uh, really touching on the, the humanity of the character yeah. and the language. It was, it's just really, the creature is... Awesome. And yeah. I'm so glad the creature's all over yeah, me too. the Tiki universe. And so if we're on movies, then um, I guess our next one would be, this is a, a riff on the chilled monkey brains from Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Um, this one is Monkey Eyes, um, uh, TD Art. Let me see. And um, it, it's so that you can serve your chilled monkey brains at the bar. 
when you pulled this monk when you pulled this mug down i i thought it was the monkey from faces of death oh have you ever seen faces of death i have not well there's a scene in faces of death where like they go to a restaurant and then they and they sit at a table and then they have a live monkey that they have trapped in the middle of it and then they all start banging on its head oh. until the thing dies and then they cut then a guy then the the waiter comes over and cuts the head open and then they eat the brains because in the whole idea about what faces of death was like it was like all this like real live stuff like mm -hmm. people getting killed but for real well then what they're finding out now is like half the shit that was in that movie wasn't fake and this was fake too so it actually kind of makes oh, me happy it actually <laughs> makes me happy that that was completely fake so if you have seen that movie or that documentary they weren't really eating monkey brains, nor were they eating it in was the Raider Temple of Doom. Yeah, in, in uh, Temple of Doom, they uh, the they were not really eating monkey brains. It was probably some kind of you know Jello like concoction. Yeah, um, because you know that would definitely fall under the ASPCA yeah. for films. Exactly. Um, and then another film sort of homage. This one's from the Golden Tiki. This is one of their Golden Tiki house mugs. Once again, adventure films, 1960s and 70s. Takes you back to Voyage of Sinbad, yeah. the Cyclops, because there's only one eye in that skull. Really? And, um, but they've done it with the tattooing on the sides of the skull. And, wow. Um, and since Tom and I absolutely adore, you know, Ray Harryhausen and all of those adventure movies from when we were little, this we had to have. I'll tell you what, I could totally see the detail. He's got his eye on you. I got my eye on you. Yeah. yeah. I love this mug. <laughs> it, it's awesome. And, you know, you know, you can plop the straw through the where the horn would have been and yeah, it's just a great mug. They did a fab, fab, yeah. fabulous job on that one. And yeah. I think that one is a Tiki Farm. It was um, sculpted by Thor. So that one's pretty cool. And then if we're talking about skulls, then we've got this guy's awesome. Yeah. And I'm really glad to see his work getting out in a bunch of other different places. Yes. So this was one of his original Kickstarters. This is Trevor Foster Studios. Okay. And the neat thing about Trevor Foster's stuff is when you get it in your hand, the sculpting is so intricate right. that you, you can really see where where all of the muscles would join the, the skull and where the uh, his his detail is just gorgeous. And so now he's doing other things with this skull appearing it uh so there's one out now called um i think it's laid to death or laid to rest this is where it's um a combination of a number of plate um uh, of tea people coming together and building this mug and it's the trevor foster skull but it has a really ornate plumeria lay underneath it which is actually really cool yeah. in, a, in an island culture kind of yeah. standpoint because the plumeria was um, considered a funerary flower they were the some of the flowers of death and so having that with the skull was actually i love that pretty mug. awesome the most sanitized version would probably be the disney skull so that one slash is, that shrunken head yeah, i mean so i mean it's too a, it's a zombie so essentially if you're if, if you're seeing the, the 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 eyes that are stitched or the mouth that's stitched that's, that would be a shrunken so this is a shrunken zombie head yeah, but um, also no. in the the in the the zombie process itself, they yeah. also would seal the mouth yeah. uh, and the eyes in some depictions. But when they went back and they actually were studying Haiti and studying the zombification yeah. process, it was actually it was they didn't they buried them, but they didn't disfigure the corpse. Yeah, because it was a almost like a, a drug, a sleeping type death. And there, it was a, an extreme form of punishment where you took a really horrible individual and you sicked the, the priest on them. He zombified them and then they were used as slave labor in other parts of the island. They're one of the few documented cases they have, Whoa. a fellow had wandered away from the plantation where he had been spending his zombification and 
uh, freaked out his family by coming back to life. And um, the drug wore off and there were and they did a lot of research on it. It was really very interesting. And that's where they kind of take... Um, What's the drug? That they take? Well, originally it's a puffer fish poison. <laughs> um, and it's blended with a bunch of other things. And so there's a lot of articles about zombification and, uh, and the rituals of that in, in Haiti. So next to that one would be um, our... This one here? Yeah. So... <laughs> that one is a Montiki import that was designed by Stryker. And there you've got, you know, the, the whole jungle, scary, the, the serpent. Because um, a lot of times, well, the movie The Serpent and the Rainbow yeah. uh, is um, supposedly a, a, taken from a real episode of, a, um, of an individual going into Haiti and ending up um, zombified. Really? And um, So this is a thing to get zombified. Yeah. Crazy. And so they did the, the Don the Beach thing is, you know, he gave all his drinks that he, that were really stiff that he wanted to masculinize frightening connotations like, a, you know, a yeah. shark bite or a zombie yeah. or that kind of thing. And so, and if you drink too many zombies, you probably will be zombified. <laughs> There's a reason why there's a limit of two. Yep. And then the, the last two zombie representations, this one is European. The detail on this is incredible. Yeah. And I'm, I was trying to look up the <laughs> artist because I, I bought it a long time ago. And I really, really loved the depiction because it's, it's deeply disturbing. And um, I believe it's a Czech ceramicist that I got that from, but they could have been a Ukrainian. Um, but it's probably one of the most disturbing of the zombie mugs that we've ever brought home well it's all about the eyes yeah they glazed dead looking you know it's just it's got all the magic to it the the partially removed skin in places you know and then next to that is the one that is the house mug for the monkey's paw the monkey's paw is in eugene oregon and um they sell these and everyone is unique which is really really cool i have one myself and i love it and it's a really cool tiki bar it is, uh, and I love the the idea that the piece of the tiki bar you get to bring home is individual yeah. to you, which is super neat and really hard to pull off in a on a large scale. So, Incredible. but yes, I I thought that was pretty darn awesome. So there we have severed things, cranium things, and and mostly dead things. Yeah. <laughs> well, and here's the thing. I mean, it's like. There's obviously a, a, like an element of humor to this all. I would hope so. Um, you know, anybody who wants to, you know, seriously dive into things like severed heads and yeah. um, things. But mostly I come at it from a Scooby-Doo sort of point of view. Okay. You know, so as we were growing up, there was Johnny Quest and yeah. Scooby-Doo and, you know, yep. unmasking the guy at the end. And it was always a rubber mask. And... And you wondered how did they get that rubber mask on that? <laughs> you know? But it was always a rubber mask of some kind. Yeah. And so for us, these kind of adventure things yeah. were what was exciting. And so we're just trying to, you know, pull some of that excitement from. So what you're you know, saying, Jeannie, is these mugs of severed people and zombies are, is relieving your childhood. So you may be asking yourself, how can I join the Tiki Goth Club? Well, there is no membership. There are no fees. Well, things have changed. For $15, you can become a member of the Tiki Goth Club. What does $15 get you? It gets you your own membership card with your own number. You also get a couple stickers and a pin. I also have shirts for sale. These are $20, $5 shipping and handling. If you're interested in any of this, go to my website, tikiwithray.com, and there's a tab that says Tiki Golf Club. Just click on that, and all the information you need is there.